Welcome to this video tutorial about building core data services views in ABAP on SAP HANA as of SAP NetWeaver Application Server ABAP 7.4 Support Package 5. First of all, let me briefly explain what this topic is all about. The core data services, short CDS, is a collection of domain-specific languages and services for defining and consuming semantically rich data models in HANA. The basic idea behind integrating CDS into the ABAP server is to support the code push down to the database layer and to simplify the consumption of relational data models by means of few entities in ABAP. A CDS view is defined in an ABAP DDL source object. The corresponding HANA view is automatically created on the database during the CDS view activation. One of the benefits of this so-called top-down approach is that only the CDS view has to be transported with the standard ABAP transport mechanism. The HANA transport container and the HANA delivery unit are not involved in this process. The developer can now create and manage the whole life cycle of a HANA view in the ABAP development tools. There is no need for an additional HANA development user or for the SAP HANA Studio. If you want to learn more about, about ABAP CDS view, I will refer you to the video Introduction to the Core Data Services in ABAP on A. Go to your ABAP project, select the package of your choice, and create a new ABAP DDL source object using the context menu. Maintain the required information, choose a transport request if required, and confirm the creation dialog. The new object is now available in the Project Explorer. Let's now define our CDS view as a select from the sales order items table. The name of the CDS view entity is defined directly after the keywords defined view. We will define the select list by entering the required column names in curly brackets. Key fields can be defined using the keyword key. The automatic code completion feature is available in the ABAP DDL source editor. The automatic syntax check is showing an error at the top of the editor. Either hover the error icon or open the problems view in order to read the error message. As we can see, the annotation specifying the name of the associated SQL view is missing. Use the quick fix functionality to resolve the issue. We can change the name suggested in the quotation marks. The usual ABAP dictionary rules apply to this name. Save and activate your DDL source. After refreshing our package in the Project Explorer, we can see that a new view has been added to our package. This is a DDL SQL view which is associated to our DDL source object and fully managed by the ABAP dictionary. Let's preview the data using the context menu Open Data Preview. We can now go ahead with the definition of our CDS view by defining a left outer join with the product table and en enhancing the select list with columns names from the join table. We can now save and activate our view and have a look at the data preview again. In the next step, we will provide a shorter product ID without the first three characters and also provide a more explanative type code. We will use the built-in string function substring to shorten the product ID. Other built-in functions are provided. An alias must be defined for the result of a built-in function. For providing a more explanative type code, we will use the case statement.
an alias must also be defined for the result of a case statement. We can now save, activate, and preview our DDL source object. In the next step, we will add semantics to our CDS view definition in order to define the field currency code as the reference field of the field gross amount. Mm -hmm. To achieve this, we must add two annotations to our CDS view definition. With the first one, we specify the currency code field as a currency key. And then with the second one, we specify the gross amount field as a currency field and then assign the field currency code as its currency key. Different annotations are available and can be used to enrich CDS data models, for example, those related to the subbuffering. We will go ahead with the definition by displaying the sum of the gross amount instead of the original gross amount. An alias must also be specified for the result of an aggregate function. This field is now the one specified as currency field. The reason for the error displayed for the select statement is that the group by clause must be used if aggregate expressions are contained in the select list. Let's use the quick fix functionality for resolving the issue. Still, an error is available. The reason for this error is due to the fact that all fields of the select list must be contained in the group by list, except aliases and those fields used in aggregate functions. Let's add the missing fields and validate our DDL source object. Finally, we will add a WHERE clause to our select list. Save, activate, and preview the DDL source object. Well, the aggregate function seems not to work properly. The reason for that is the key field used in the grouping list. Let's perform a small change to our view definition, activate, and preview the data again. The sum of the gross amount field is now being calculated. As you can see, the associated SQL view has been updated accordingly. But note that all defined CDS semantic information cannot be visualized in transaction SE11. To close up this demo, I will show you a simple one-liner report for displaying a CDS view using the ABAP list viewer with integrated data access, also known as ALV on HANA. The name of the associated DDL SQL view must be specified in the create method. Save, activate, and run your report. This is the end of our system demonstration. For more information, guides, and tutorials, please visit our homepage on SCN.